Hello everyone! In this video and for the upcoming videos, we will be discussing lessons regarding factoring. To start with the greatest common monomial factoring. I am assuming now that you already know how to apply the distributive property of multiplication as well as how to get special products using techniques. It would also be a great help if you can still remember how to get the GCF or the greatest common factor. For our first lesson in the factoring is actually the direct opposite of the distributive property of multiplication. Recall that in distributive property, we are given a times the quantity b plus c, which will result into a b plus a c. This time, we will be given the product a b plus a c, and then we will express it as a times the quantity of b plus c. To illustrate, let us consider this figure which represents a binomial. We have a first term, either plus or minus sign, and our second term. For the first move, we will identify the GCF of these terms as well as their other factors. And then we will take the GCF as one of the factors of our answer. For the second factor, we will use the remaining factors of our two given terms and enclose them in a pair of parentheses. So now the answer takes this form. The GCF of the given terms times the quantity of the factor left on the first term, the given operation, and then the factor left on our second term. Let's have some examples. 3x squared plus 6x. The first step based on the figure earlier is we identify the GCF. To do that, let us express these terms as a product of primes. 3 times x times x for the first term, 3 times 2 times x for our second term. If we will go into multiply these factors, we will surely go back to our original term. Now using this prime factorization, we can see clearly their common factors. We have 3 as their common factor. Another common factor is x. Multiplying these common factors will result into the GCF. We will take this GCF as one of the factors for our answer. For our second factor, we will use these remaining factors of the two terms. For the first term, we still have left x, while for the second term, we still have 2. The other factor now is x plus 2, retaining the plus sign from the given. Therefore, the answer that we are looking for is 3x times the quantity x plus 2. Another example, 16a squared b minus 18ab squared. To determine the GCF, let us do the prime factorization. For the first term, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times a times a times b. While for the second term, we have 2 times 3 times 3 times a times b times b. Let us identify their common factors. We have 2, a, and b. Multiplying this, we will have 2ab as our GCF. This GCF will be one of the factors of our answer, while for the second factor, we will use these factors left to these two terms. For the first term, we still have left 2 times 2 times 2 times a, which is equivalent to 8a. For our second term, 3 times 3 times b, which is 9b, leaving the operation minus. The answer now will be 2ab times the quantity 8a minus 9b. To check our work, all we have to do is to apply the distributive property of multiplication. 2ab times 8a, we have 16a squared b. 2ab times negative 9b, we have negative 18ab squared. For our last example, let's have 20x squared y cubed z minus 15xy squared z squared plus 10x squared y squared z squared. Expressing these three terms as a product of primes, we will have the prime factorization, as you can see, is quite long. This would take time. I'm sure some of you has a technique on how to identify the GCF without doing this whole thing. But for those students who have forgotten already how to get the GCF, this whole process that we are doing might help. Let us continue. Identifying their common factors, we have 5, 
all of them has 5 in their prime factorization. Another is x, y, another y, and a z. Now, the product of these common factors is 5xy squared z, which will be our GCF. We will write this as one of the factors for our answer. For our second factor, leaving the minus sign and the plus sign, we will use the factors left to these three terms. For the first term, we still have left 2 times 2 times x times y. The product of those is 4xy. In the middle term, we still have left 3 and z. Product is 3z. For the last term, we have 2 times x times z, which will result in 2 2xz. So now the answer that we are looking for is 5xy squared z times the quantity 4xy minus 3z plus 2xz. That's it. That's how we do the greatest common monomial factoring. Again, this will be easy if you know how to get the GCF and how to apply the distributive property of multiplication. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, click on the thumbs up. You may also check our playlist regarding special products and do not forget to subscribe.